This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to talk about counting problems. We're specifically going to address seating people type of problems. In our first section, we're going to talk about what a factorial is. In our second section, we're going to talk about how to arrange people in a row. In our third section, we're going to talk about how to arrange people in a circle. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about what a factorial is. A factorial is any number or quantity that has an exclamation point after it. So in the realm of mathematics, if you put some expression, or in this case a number, with an exclamation point after it, this exclamation point means factorial. All right, well, how do you calculate it? Well, it just means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you take the first number and all the subsequent numbers that go below it, all the in integers that are below that number you start with, until you reach 1, and you find the product of all those numbers. So if we did that, let's see, that would be 20. 20 times 6 is 120. Okay, uh, likewise, I could take 4 factorial. We're just going to stick with some easy numbers so this way I don't have to grab a calculator. And I just want to demonstrate what factorial means and how to easily calculate it. Of course, you could plug these into a calculator, especially when the numbers get big, and the calculator will make these calculations for you. So here I'm going to get 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. So uh, when we do these problems where we seat people, uh, we'll actually use these factorials to speed up the calculation process. Let's address the case where we put people in a row. Here's our first problem. All right, so here we have four people, Anna, Blaine, Clara, and Dorian, and they're going to be uh, sat in a row. How many ways are there to arrange them in a row? So there's a lot of ways to do this. As a matter of fact, you could start making a list. Um, I'm just going to use the letters A, B, C, and D and show you how this would work. A, B, C, and D. All right, so I could arrange them in this order, Anna, Blaine, Clara, Dorian. Or what I could do is I could switch up Dorian, Clara. Okay, well, I could, instead of putting B second, I could put C second. Uh, okay, when C is second, I could put D and B in that order. Uh, okay, well, wait, I could also put, instead of B or C, I could put mm, D second. And then I would have B and C, or maybe I could put A, D, C, B. Okay, now these are all the combinations where A is first. So you can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's six different ways to make arrangements here when uh, Anna is first, when she sat first. So there's six ways. Now, I don't need to do this again, but I could put B first, and I can make another arrangement. Okay, so uh, similarly of six different arrangements when B is first. So think of it this way. When A is Anna. When Anna sat first, there's six ways to do it. If Blaine is going to be sat first, there's six ways to do it, and so on. Clara, six ways to do it. If Dorian is sat first, there's six ways to do it. And of course, I would find the sum, and I'm going to get 24 different ways. Now, there's a faster way to do this. We would say, okay, there's four seats, and we go hmm, how many people could I possibly put here? Well, I only put one person, but four people are available to sit in that first spot. Okay, there's four possible people I could put th there. Now, once that person is sat, then how many people could I choose from to sit in this spot? Now there's three people available that I could choose from. And now two people have been sat, now there's only two people I could choose to possibly put here. And then finally, there'd be one person left here. So the fundamental counting principle says, since all of these are independent events, I'm going to multiply them together. And this is going to be also 12 times 2, or 24. 
So in the future, I'm not going to do all this work. I'm not going to make all these lists and add. I'm not even going to multiply like this. I'm simply going to take 4 factorial and I'm going to toss it in the calculator and it's going to give me the answer 24 because I don't want to have to do all this stuff again. Okay, let's try our new technique and let's see if we can make it quick. Alright, so I uh, just got rid of some stuff. Let's put on a new problem. Alright, here's our new problem. Let's say we have seven people and we're going to be seating them in a row. How many ways can we do it? Well, let's see, seven people, seven factorial. So, I'm going to plug this into a calculator. So, there's 5,040 ways to do it. Okay, so what does this mean in general? You know, it, it, it's nice to have some way to look at this and look at this in general. That means if we know there's n people who need to be sat in a row, we know the solution. The solution is going to be n factorial for an answer. Okay, let's go on to the next section. For this section, we're going to be seating people in a circle. Let's check out our first problem. All right, so here we have the same people that we started off with problem one uh, uh, from the other section. We have Anna, Blaine, Claire, and Dorian, but this time, now we're going to try to seat them at a circular table. So just to see how this could be done, uh, what you could do is put A, B, C, and D. Now, now picture this as a table. I'm not going to draw a table, but let's say they're around a table. And, um, you know, I, I could draw a little table here just to give you an idea. But here you have A, B, C, and D, and they're all sitting around a table. Okay, so there's one possible configuration. Okay, you could also do A, B, D, C. Okay, then you could do also A, hmm, let's see, B was right to A's immediate side. So how about I go with C? So I got A, C, B, and D. Uh, okay, well, wait a minute. Uh, I could also have C after A, and then maybe I can go D and B in that order. Okay, so I did all the combinations with B after A and C after A, so now I could have D after A. So I could also put A, D, B, C. Okay, so... You could see that there are, if I could separate these, I'm going to use some lines here, but you could see that there are six different combinations. And it turns out that's all there are. And then the immediate reaction people have is, well, wait a minute, you, you have A first. You know, why don't I put like, uh, I don't know, B, and then maybe I put C, A, D. Maybe, you know, I could put things in that order and say, hey, you didn't count this particular arrangement and I would say well, yes I did now if you start with just by looking at a it's a d b c right if I just go clockwise a d b c uh, I'm gonna find it a dip it's right here a d b c now you're thinking wait a minute this isn't the same arrangement as this well yes it is now if you look at a that would be Anna to her left, she sees Dorian. Anna sees Clara to her right. Okay, same thing over here. Anna to her right sees Clara. Anna to her left sees Dorian. And the same thing's true for everything. Everything else is working out perfectly. So even though these arrangements of people have been slightly rotated, remember it's a circular table. And I'm looking at each other as they're placed around this table. So therefore, this arrangement is the same as this. It's a duplicate, and I'm not going to count them twice. Okay, so it turns out that this is a, a little bit trickier of a situation to count. So I'm going to explain how to count that. So when we start to consider counting this, you have to imagine, because of the rotation, rotational nature of a table, that it doesn't matter where you seat the first person because it's rotationally going to be the same 
in some other rotated configuration. So it, it doesn't matter where you place the first person. So that means if, if I start with four people, I really only need to do the calculation as if there are three people. Because again, it doesn't matter where I put the first person down in the table. It's how I arrange people around that first person that matters. Okay, so if I start with four people, like I, I am in this situation, we're starting with four people, I still do the same calculation I did in the last section with a row, but with one fewer person. So I'm going to take three people and take the factorial. So that means I do three times two times one, which is six. There's six ways to arrange them, and there you go. There you see them. So the mathematics matches now the counting method that I did by longhand. It's a shocker, I know. Okay, let's try another problem. Okay, so let's say we had six people and we're going to be seating them in a circle. How many ways can it be done? Okay, so what do you do? You say it doesn't matter where you sit the first person, so you sit the first person down. Now you have five people left. So I want to figure out how many ways to ar there are to arrange those remaining five people. Okay, so I'd say it's five factorial. I throw this in a calculator and it's 120 different ways. So I don't want to do these by hand. It starts to take way too much time and a lot of organization to make sure I get all 120. It's just easier to calculate. Okay, so in general, how does this work? What if I were to have to seat n number of people? If we were going to seat n people in a circle, and I want to know how many ways could I arrange them around that table, well, it turns out there's n minus 1 factorial ways of doing that. And that's how it looks in general. This has been MathGuide.com talking about seating people. Make sure you go back to MathGuide and check out our interactive quizzes, our instructional videos, and text-based lessons.